So let's suppose that we are asked to examine the surface of a liquid. And let's suppose we're examining the surface of water. So if we take a small cross-sectional area of the surface of water and we zoom in many times, we'll get to the microscopic level. Now, what exactly will we observe on the microscopic level? We'll see that the individual molecules, water molecules composing the surface of the water are interacting with one another via intermolecular interactions called hydrogen bonds. So in other words, the H atoms on one water molecule will interact with an adjacent oxygen atom on another adjacent water molecule. And together, these forces will create a relatively strong effect. In other words, if I look at this microscopic sheet of surface water molecules, and I try to push down with the force onto this sheet of water molecules down on the surface, these intermolecular bonds will create a force that will resist this pushing force. And this force is known as the surface tension. It's the tension created by the intermolecular bonds found on the surface of our liquid. So, once again, the surface of a liquid at rest is composed of molecules that interact with one another via intermolecular bonds. In the case of water, these intermolecular bonds are called hydrogen bonds. Now, if we place a light enough object on the surface of our liquid, let's say a needle, the surface acts as if it was under tension. So, the intermolecular bonds on the surface of the liquid create a tension for a tensile force known as surface tension. So, in the same way that if we take a sheet of paper and we place an object onto that sheet of paper, that sheet of paper will be able to hold our object up, assuming the object isn't very heavy. In, in other words, if we take that sheet of paper, we place an object on top of it, the force of gravity will try to pull that object down, but that sheet will create a tensile force that will act in the opposite direction of gravity. In the same exact way, the surface of the liquid acts as a sheet of fluid that creates surface tension that points in the opposite direction of the gravitational force. So here we have a diagram of a needle resting on top of our sheet of water. What happens is, the intermolecular bonds between the individual water molecules found on the surface of the water create a tensile force called surface tension, which resists the force of gravity, and that's exactly why our needle remains in static equilibrium on top of our water. So actually, surface tension is defined via the following formula. Surface tension given by the Greek symbol gamma is equal to the force which acts perpendicular to the surface of on which our object is on divided by L the length on which our object is on. So this gives us the surface tension on top of our fluid. So here we have a table of several values for surface tension for four different substances. For example, mercury at 20 degrees Celsius has a surface tension of 0.44 newtons per meter and water at that same temperature has a value of 0.072 newtons per meter. Now, why is it that mercury has a higher value than water? Well, that's because the intermolecular forces holding the individual mercury molecules within that mercury is higher, is stronger than the intermolecular forces holding our individual water molecules because Surface tension is defined by intermolecular forces, intermolecular bonds. Now, in the same exact way that a sheet of paper will partially take the shape of the object, the surface of the liquid will also partially take the shape of the object as shown. It will bend in the following way. It will take the shape of our object. 
and the force of gravity which will act downward, our two tensile forces, the surface tension forces, will act at an angle as shown. And the angle is usually given with respect to the vertical axis. So these two angles will have the same exact quantity and these two forces will also have the same exact value. So this is the side view of the needle as the needle lies on top of the surface of the water. So if we take the cross-sectional area, we get the following result, the following diagram. Now, let's suppose we want to solve the following example using this formula. A needle has a radius of 3 times 10 to negative 4 meters and a total mass of 0.005 grams. If the needle remains on the surface of the water, find the angle that the surface tension makes with respect to the vertical axis. Assume the temperature of the water is 20 degrees Celsius. So, we essentially want to use this value for our surface tension. And using this formula and this value, we want to solve our example. We want to solve for this angle that our surface tension makes with respect to the vertical y-axis. So, because our, uh, because our needle is floating on our liquid, that means it's in static equilibrium. So the sum of all the forces acting on our object along the y-axis is equal to zero. So that means 2 multiplied by, we get the 2 from the fact that there are two forces, two component forces pointing along the y-axis due to these two tensile forces. So 2, our gamma multiplied by L, well we multiply gamma by L to get the force. Because if we take this and multiply both sides by L, we get our force. So 2 times gamma times L times cosine of the angle theta, this cosine theta simply comes from the fact that we need to find the Y component forces of these two two-dimensional forces. So minus m times g, the gravitational force, is equal to zero. So now we solve for cosine theta and we get m times g divided by 2 gamma times L. Now we can approximate L to be half the circumference of our uh, needle. So half the circumference is simply 2 times pi times r divided by 2 or simply pi times r. So this L is pi times r where r is simply this radius. This gamma is simply this quantity 0.072 newtons per meter. The m is simply the mass of the needle. This quantity divided by 1000 because we want to convert to kilograms and the g's are constant 9.8 meters per second squared and we get a value of 0.36 so next we take the trick uh, we take the inverse of the cosine function of this value and we get an angle of 69 degrees so that means these two angles are both 69 degrees